Here we go for our video lectures on unit 2. First one is on scalars and vectors. We need to know the difference between a scalar quantity and a vector quantity. We need to be able to take vectors and split them into two parts. And we need to be able to take two parts and put them together to make one vector. So the first thing we need to be clear about is the difference between a scalar quantity and a vector quantity. So a scalar quantity is one which has only got a size. If you're adding them together, it's really simple. You just add the two numbers together. So the example that will make this clear is mass. Mass is a scalar quantity. If you've got two kilograms of apples and three kilograms of oranges, you've got five kilograms altogether. There's no way you could come to any different answer if you turn the apples upside down. They'll still have a mass of two kilograms. A vector quantity is one which also has a magnitude, but has a direction as well. So the example that you'll be familiar with all the way back to year seven is force, if you've got a 10 newton force to the left and a 10 newton force to the right, it might look as if you've got 20 newtons on you, but the total effect of those two forces, the resultant vector, is zero newtons. We might have done a little bit where we say this is plus 10 and this is minus 10, so we end up with a total of zero. Okay, to see if we've got that idea, um, they might ask you in the exam to state a scalar quantity or a vector quantity, or they might ask you one of these to say whether it is scalar or vector. So mass, we've already seen, is a scalar quantity. Force is a vector quantity. It has a direction. Some of the other ones are a little bit confusing. Displacement and distance sound like they're the same thing. Right, but displacement has a direction. Distance is the scalar part of that direction. So displacement might be 3 metres north. The distance away is three meters. Okay, velocity and speed again is a pair, so velocity is 40 miles an hour going north. The vector part is 40 miles an hour going north, the scalar part is just the 40 miles an hour. Acceleration you'll be familiar with again from key stage four, the accelerations can be negative, that means you're accelerating in the opposite direction, sometimes that's slowing down. So that's a vector quantity, but energy is a scalar quantity, for example, if two cars are heading towards each other, their kinetic energy is the total of the two, it's not zero. Okay, so to see if we've got this, we can look at the difference between distance and displacement. So if we walk four meters east and then three meters west, and we want to know how far we've walked, well, here we go, we walk four meters to the east, we turn round, we can three meters back to the west, What's the total distance we've walked? Well, we've walked seven metres. But what's our displacement? We're only one metre away from where we started, so the displacement is only one metre. So we could work that one out by calling it east positive, and that would be plus four, but this would be minus three to the east. Life gets a bit more complicated when we start to do two dimensions, so what if we walk four metres east, and then we walk three metres north? Okay, let's think again, how far have we walked? Well, clearly, we must have walked seven metres. But what's our displacement? And if you look at this, we've got a right angle triangle. It's a three, four, five triangle. Pythagoras will tell us that the displacement is five metres. We're five metres away from where we started. Now, sometimes what we'll get is a vector with a direction, and we need to split it into its two perpendicular components. This is called resolving the vector, splitting it up into how much north and how much east I've walked. In order to be able to do this, you've got to be confident in your use of trigonometry. So here's a little reminder of the trigonometric formulas for you, but you really have to be able to do that. Go away and do some practice if you find that difficult. So how far have I walked uh, to the north and how far have I walked to the east? Well, to get the distance north, we need this direction here, this length here. Look at the triangle. This is the opposite of the triangle, so we're looking for sine because we've got a hypotenuse and we want an opposite. The sine of the angle is the opposite of the hypotenuse. If we arrange that, we get the opposite is the hypotenuse times the sine. Hypotenuse is 20. 20 sine 30 is 10 meters. So this length here is 10 meters. How are we going to work out this distance here? This is the distance east, it's the length of this line here. Notice that this is to make this a right angle. Now we're looking for an adjacent length, so we want a cos. You'll always find is a sine part and a cos part. So by the same process, 
the adjacent length of distance of northeast is the hypotenuse times the cos, which comes to 17.3 metres. Okay, a little bit of practice for you here. If you want some practice on these, just pause the video, have a look at them. We've just changed slightly from talking about north and east to talking about vertical and horizontal. So here's a force, well, from the distance, but it's still a vector quantity. So if we want to find the vertical part of this, we want this length here. Okay, the opposite to the angle, so we're doing sine. So it's 15 times the sine of 60, which is 13. Here's the horizontal part. Okay, that's 15 times the cos of 60 is 7 to 7.5. Okay, pause the video there if you need to, see if you can do the other ones. Thanks for coming up. Okay, you really need to be confident on those because that's quite an important part of the rest of this unit. Okay, the other thing to be able to do is to take these perpendicular vectors and combine them back together again. Okay, the first part of that is quite straightforward because this is a right angle triangle. All you've got to notice is this length here is the same if I moved it over to here, so this would look like a triangle. So to get the hypotenuse, all we need to do is Pythagoras. So we've got 8 squared plus 5 squared is 89. Don't forget to take the square root 9.4. Okay, two things to notice that will help you out here. It's more than either of those two, because this has got to be a longer line, but it's less than those two added together. Okay, because it can't be as the longest line could possibly be as if both were in the same direction. To get the angle, we need to use our third trig formula because we've got an opposite and an adjacent. So we add those, uh, we use the tan theta. So tan theta is opposite over adjacent. 8 over 5, do tan minus 1 of 8 over 5, that would give you 58 degrees. Okay, again, just two of these to practice. So we've got 10 and 6, we've got 12 and 5, put those together. Okay, might help to draw some little lines in there to construct the triangle. There's a hypotenuse. Again, just pause the video, see if you can do that. Okay, so this one comes to 11.7, square root of 10 squared plus 6 squared. Then it comes to 59, the inverse tan of 10 over 6. This is a 5, 12, 13 triangle, so Again, 5 squared plus 12 squared, square root of is 13. Tan minus 1, that's 12 over 5, is 64.7. Just notice here we're measuring the angle to this one. We're not asking the angle to this one. You could do that and take it away from 90, or you can do tan minus 1 of 6 over 10. 